Hey everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Often in my Lightroom videos, I've done a little trick with the radio filter, and it's occurred to me that I've never really done a video explaining this trick fully and how you could use it in your workflow. So, that's what we're going to be doing today. Alright, this trick is useful whenever you have a slider maxed out. For example, I have this image here and I have shadows at plus 100. Let's just pretend, I kind of like it the way it is, but let's pretend that I needed the shadows to be a little brighter. Well, I can't go past 100. Well, that's where this trick comes in. What you would do is get the radial filter. Now, those of you that have been watching my videos for a while know that I used to do this trick with the graduated filter before Lightroom actually had a radio filter available. So if you prefer, you actually could do it with the graduated filter as well. But the radio filter is a little easier. So I'm going to have the radio filter. And what you want to do is just put a tiny little radio filter outside the image, something like that. So it's just sitting here outside the image. And if I hover over the center pin, you'll notice that the entire image has a red overlay on it. That's because the invert checkbox is not checked. That's important. Make sure it's not checked. And then that means any sliders I move affect every single pixel in the image. So I maxed out the shadows at plus 100 in the basic tab. I put this radio filter outside the image. And then what I could do is go to this shadows tab or shadow slider inside the radio filter and move it up. Now you'll notice it doesn't have the same dramatic effect that the basic tab does. The basic tab is a lot more uh, noticeable, but it will get you just a little bit more, in this case, shadows. And again, you could do this for any slider you've maxed out that is duplicated up here in the radio filter. So if you've maxed out exposure, you could put a radio filter outside, move exposure up. If you want more contrast, you could do it there. So you could do it whenever you want to just move a slider past 100. You could do it with the radio filter. Now, if that still isn't enough, what you could do is just put another one, another one down. And then again, shadows. And what you'll find, each subsequent radio filter will affect the image less and less. So it seems to lose its effectiveness the more radio filters you put down. But it still, in some instances, might help you tweak out a little bit more of whatever you need. In this case, some um, something in the shadows. I want to see more in the shadows. Now, you don't have to draw extra radio filters on like I did. Uh, you have this single radio filter you just did. If you wanted to duplicate it, you could just right-click on it and go to Duplicate. And then what it will do is it will put another radio filter right on top of the original radio filter. You can see there's actually two there. So it puts one right on top of the other with the same exact settings. So the slider, the shadow slider is at 100. And if you want to duplicate it again, just right click, duplicate. Now there's actually three, one right on top of the other, like that. So that's another way you could do it if you don't want to just keep laying down new radio filters. Just right click on the pin in the middle and that little menu will pop up and you could go to duplicate. And again, the more you add, the uh, less effective uh, the sliders are. Uh, you won't get as much um, change uh, when you're duplicating them. But again, I think it's a trick that's useful to know. Now, one other thing we're going to finish with, let's get rid of some of these. When you have a radio filter, another advantage of using this, let's just pretend that I wanted to just affect the sky, let's say. Um, now, you could do it with a graduated filter too, but, in, but if, let's just say, uh, so I just want the sky blue. I want that to be brighter. What I could do is put that radio filter down and it comes with a range mask. So I could go to color. I could get the eyedropper and click on the sky. So now the shadows adjustment is mainly only affecting any blue in the image, which is the sky. So that's another nice thing about using a radio filter. Again, on this specific image, I could have just laid a graduated filter down right in the middle and use the range mask color on the blue sky as well. I mean, 
that's the right way to do it. But I just wanted to make you aware that when you're doing this with the radio filter, it does have a range mask and you could take advantage of that as well. So that's it for this video. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>